and we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, we are going to be doing our preseason recap of all of the games that went down yesterday. I already talked about the um, the 76ers game like a little bit when I was doing the Paul George segment, but I'm going to go ahead and like you know talk a little bit more about it again. Just because, you know, I didn't really talk about any of the key contributing players for this game. So again, this was the game that Paul George ended up getting injured and it could trickle down into him getting injured for um, most of the regular season. We'll see how that goes. Again, not entirely sure exactly how that's going to work. But the 76ers, they ended up winning 104 to 89, an easy win primarily due to Trey Young and con- uh, giving them the ball essentially. I mean, he turned the ball over a lot in this game. But the for the for the 76ers, the leading scorer was Kelly Oubre Jr. and he ended up scoring um 14 points. Obviously, everyone knows Kelly Oubre, but I have to put Jr. in that because you know this isn't the first Kelly Oubre. I'm gonna I'm gonna Tyrese Maxey ended up also being the leading scorer for the 76ers, recorded 14 points, and ended with 7 assists as well. Again, these starters, they should not be playing 26, 27 minutes in this game. They just should not. And we saw the problem with that with Paul George immediately getting injured after 12 minutes of playing. And, like, injuries, they are a big problem. And when they happen in the preseason, it could trickle down. I'm just throwing that out there for all of you 76ers fans. There was also K.J. Martin, who came off the bench 22 minutes, ended with 11 points. The 76ers, they shot decent enough from the field to end up winning. Again, a big reason why they won was because of Trey Young's turnovers, and Trey Young was not happy in the press conference with those turnovers that he got. And he ended up having 10 points, 9 assists as well, so pretty standard Trey Young performance, 4 for 12 from the field. Again, rather inefficient game from Trey Young, but this is sort of to be expected from Trey Young with the shots that he takes, and not only that, just his overall field goal percentage throughout his career. He's been rather inefficient recently. Now, other contributing players for the um, Atlanta Hawks, Zachary Rissacher, the number one pick in the draft, he ended up scoring 14 points and recorded eight rebounds in this game. So far in this preseason, he's been very promising. So again, if if everything can fall into place, he did go 5 for 11 from the field. However, he did shoot 1 of 5 from 3. So that's really going to be like the only thing that needs to be improved on for Zachary, his um his three-point shooting. But again, so far he's showing a lot of promise for being a forward that is I believe 6 foot 10, I want to say, maybe maybe 6 foot 9. Let me just go ahead and check his um check his bio. Yep, yeah, 6 foot 9. So Again, showing a lot of promise for the Atlanta Hawks and something that they can look back on. Now, next game that we're going to talk about is the Nets absolutely destroying the Washington Wizards. I predict that the Wizards are going to be the worst team in the NBA, period. They're going to be worse than the Pistons this season, in my opinion. And the leading scorer for the Brooklyn Nets was Cam Thomas, ended with 24 points. No, excuse me, 24 minutes, 17 points, excuse me and was also able to record five rebounds along with that. And guess what? Ben Simmons made an appearance in this game. Oh my God, he played in a game that doesn't matter. He had 11 points in 13 minutes. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic performance from Ben Simmons. Five for seven from the field, five rebounds, two assists, just beautiful game from Ben Simmons. Everybody give him a round of applause. He was able to suit up for a game that didn't matter. And Dennis Schroeder ended up recording 13 points as well, ended up getting seven assists along with that. And the lineup is going to be very interesting. If this is how they plan um, their starting lineup to be, it is a little bit interesting how they're going with it. I mean, Dorian Finney-Smith was the power forward in this game. And considering that he's 6'7", that would put Ben Simmons at the center position, ironically enough. And again, Ben Simmons, he only played like 13 minutes. I guess, you know, he got scared or something, but... There was also Jalen Wilson that came off the bench, 14 points in 22 minutes, and Shake Milton, who ended with 16 points in 18 minutes. So overall, pretty solid production from everybody. And when Ben Simmons is scoring in double digits, it's an amazing game. Like, everyone's got a woo, like, throw the parade already. But on the Wizards' side, however, they did not play so well, of course, because, you know, I think they're going to be the worst team ever in the entire NBA. And they 
um, Jordan Poole was the leading scorer. Of course he was. And, of course, he also ended with the second most shot attempts of anyone on the team. 13 points, 1 for 4 from 3, 5 for 11 from the field. Kyle Kuzma, however, was awful. I, I can't sugarcoat that. He wasn't very good. He missed every single three-pointer he took, and he took six of them. And he went 3 for 12 from the field for seven points. Again, just bad. And I feel like this is sort of the expectation for the King, not the Kings, the uh, the Wizards. And this is going to be a trend that's going to happen throughout the entirety of the regular season for the Wizards. I think they're going to just be awful. And despite, you know, acquiring a, um, a rather competent center in Valanciunas, I don't think that's going to change anything. And Marvin Bagley the third is also on this team as well, ended with 10 points. And again, just, you know, average Wizards game. I don't expect much from the Wizards, and I don't think any of you guys should expect much either. Now, the Clippers, they matched up against the Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks have yet to win a preseason game, and they still haven't won a preseason game. So, of course, this team is heavily reliant on Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, who didn't play in this game, which is the smart move you should not play your two most important players <clears throat> 76ers they did play clay thompson however and he recorded zero points oh for nine from the field oh for six from three so all of the clay thompson jokes are going to be back at full force going oh for nine in a game that doesn't matter i don't think this is going to be the break of this season obviously i think you know it's just a bad night for clay thompson and it's normal when you're a shooter you're going to be hot and when you're a shooter there's times where you're not going to be hot it's just how the that's just how it works and the leading scorer for the dallas mavericks in this game was Jaden hardy ended the game for the starters excuse me ended the game with 16 points however quentin grimes ended up scoring 20 points coming off of the bench for the dallas mavericks and so that was really like the big highlight of the game and the best player for the dallas mavericks in this one Next is the, um, no, not, not next, excuse me. The Clippers, um, on the Clippers side, James Harden ended with 12 assists and 10 points. So solid performance coming in from James Harden. And let's see, he did shoot three for 12, however, from the field. He only took two free throws, which I think is a career low for James Harden. And um, he did shoot two for six from three. And again, it's like, you know, you can't really rely on James Harden to run an offense as you could when he was on Houston. So take that with a grain of salt if you are a Clippers fan going into this season without having Kawhi Leonard due to an injury. So it could be bad. It could be good. We'll have to see. But so far, James Harden has not shown any flashes of his days in Houston when he's on the Clippers. And Kevin Porter Jr. for the... Um, for the Clippers, yes, he's on the Clippers now. He actually ended up scoring 18 points, went 8 for 15 from the field, and was 1 for 3 from 3. So he was the leading scorer for the um, for the Clippers in this matchup. The Clippers were awful at shooting the 3-ball. They shot 27% from the field compared to the Dallas Mavericks, 37% from the field. But in the end, it didn't matter because their field goal percentage was almost 9% greater than the Dallas Mavericks' field goal percentage. So... Again, this was just an overall solid game from everybody on the Clippers aside from James Harden. And, I mean, I, I guess that's a good sign. Again, they beat the Dallas Mavericks without uh, Klay Thompson or Kyrie. and w Not not Klay Thompson. Well, technically without Klay Thompson because Klay Thompson didn't do anything in this game aside from shooting up bricks. And he, he they beat them without Kyrie, Luka Doncic, and Klay Thompson. So you can take that with a grain of salt. I don't really think that's going to change the trajectory on the Clippers. I just think that the Clippers are going to be a relatively mediocre team. They're not going to be the best team. It's all going to be dependent on how well James Harden can play. But And given the recent history with James Harden, I don't think it's going to go that well. But next game on this list is the Grizzlies going up against the Pacers. Now, since the Grizzlies are smart, they did not play John Morant. Makes complete, total sense. Again, he did suffer an injury in one of the few preseason in one of the previous preseason games that they ended up playing so that's probably a reason why he didn't suit up but that's another player that's um in my opinion should not have even been bothering and participating in the preseason games because look at what happens now now he suffers another leg injury which seems to be a common trend for John Morant and the best player for the Grizzlies ended up being Desmond Bain he recorded 23 points actually 
almost was able to outscore the entire starting lineup. Again, almost was able to outscore them. I think it was almost. Let me just do some math real quick. Um, let's see. So that's 8. Um, 8 plus 16 is 24, I think. Forgive me if I messed up that math. I'm not really good at math. Yes, it's 24. He almost outscored the entire starting roster for the Grizzlies. Almost. Um, just was just one point short. And Zach Ide had 23 points and nine rebounds. Zach Ide could be one of the more under... Like, a lot of people were expecting Zach Ide to be a little bit more like Boban um, in his career because of, you know, just how tall he is and how short he is. But he's surprisingly... No, slow he is, excuse me. He's... I said tall and short. That's my bad. But he's surprisingly, like, rather quick on his feet for being a seven foot four. He's not as quick as um, Victor Wimbanyama, obviously, but he's still rather quick enough to move his feet. And again, you know, you expect this from someone being so young. He went 10 for 15 from the field and was super efficient. And I mean, obviously, he should be super efficient. He's seven foot four. He can dunk the ball rather easily. But this is good. This is, this is some good news for Memphis. And would he... Would he be able to win Rookie of the Year? He could. He totally could. And Scottie Pippen Jr. did um, was on the Grizzlies now, ended up going 3 for 10, 9 points. And for the Pacers' side, the leading scorer for the Pacers ended up being Jairus Walker. And I don't think they're looking to play Halliburton at all in this game, which is really, um, or in any preseason game, which makes total sense. You should not bother in playing Tyrese Halliburton at all in the preseason. And... Again, they he ended the game with 15 points. Um, Benedict Mathurin, forgive me if I messed up that last name, 12 points, went 4 for 12 from the field. The Pacers as a whole and as a team, they did shoot better than the Grizzlies from 3, but and they did shoot better from the field than the Grizzlies. But at the end of the day, the Grizzlies ultimately ended up prevailing, and I believe it was mainly because they ended up getting... A few more possess, actually a lot more possessions than the Pacers to win the game. They had 92 total possess. They had 92 possessions where they actually took a shot compared to the Pacers' 79 possessions where they took a shot. So take that with a grain of salt, if you will. And next is the Bucks going up against the Chicago Bulls. Damian Lillard ended up scoring 20 points for them, and Giannis Antetokounmpo scored 24 points and 10 rebounds. So overall, solid performance from all of those guys. And Giannis, geez, he had 16 free throws in this game, and he made 12 of them, which is, you know, very efficient and very good if you're Giannis. And the Chicago Bulls, they actually had, let me see, Adam Sanogo, the center for the Bulls, ended up recording 16 points and 15 rebounds, being the leading scorer for the Bulls. So overall, just a very solid game from both of these teams. They, The Bulls, they shot a lot of three-pointers. They shot a lot of three-pointers in this game. They shot 54 three-pointers in this game and um, went seven and made 17 of them. Meanwhile, the Bucks ended up going 11 for 34, but, you know, they still ultimately prevailed. And it was really like the difference in the win was the field goal percentage, 38% from the field and compared to the Bucks is 43% from the field. So that's the recap of the preseason games. The preseason games that are going to happen today, there's a lot of them. The Knicks are matching up the Hornets. The Lakers are going to play the Warriors. Celtics are playing the Raptors. Spurs are going to play the Heat. Pelicans are going to play the Rockets. The Thunder are going to face off against the Nuggets. And the Kings are going to go up against the Jazz. So those are all the games that are going to um, that are going to happen for the rest of the day. Um, viral Reds in the chat, keep it up, bro. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for the support. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into the fifth segment where I talk about some basketball news, like you know, just the overall basketball news that's going on. I want to fit it all into one segment, and the primary thing that I'm going to talk about is how they are now betting odds for which coach is going to get fired first. Yes, you heard that right. There are betting odds on figuring out which coach is going to get fired first this season, which I'm going to get into right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned. <laughs> 